So, next up, Craig Wright. Craig Wright, if you don't know, he is the uh, patriarch <laughs> of Bitcoin SV. So you have Roger Vera for Bitcoin Cash. You have uh, Craig Wright for Bitcoin SV, Satoshi's Vision, as they call it. And uh, again, I don't see the point of it, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay, lay aside my biases as best I can. But just so you know, I am biased. And when I report on these things, I'm definitely biased. And uh, when I hear about these things, about copyright infringement, things like that, I'm like, what is really going on here? So this article states, well, it's a quote from, we will continue hosting the Bitcoin white paper and won't be silenced or intimidated. Others hosting the white paper should follow our lead in resisting these false allegations. So said Bitcoin.org, an independent open source project that aims to support Bitcoin development in a response on Thursday to an attempt by N-Chain chief scientist Craig Wright to force the site to take down its copy of the Bitcoin white paper. So if you haven't been around or just, are you new to this, the thing is, is well, what happened here? Well, Craig Wright, he went to the copyright division and said, look, this white paper belongs to me. And when you have to register copyright, first you have to prove in some way that you owned this, this copyright. And if no one else is around who can really prove anything, then you, you go through paperwork, you go through a process, and they say, okay, well, we're gonna award it to you. Now, does that mean that the copyright, that the US Copyright Department does everything that, that they have to do to look at all cryptography and look through all the different court cases and say, yes, this guy definitely was, was the first one. They didn't do that. So they just awarded it to him on a provisional basis, and here we are, and Craig Wright is going all over the place going, you know what, take it down, take it down, take it down. But here's the thing. There's been a bunch of different wallets uh, that could potentially be linked to Satoshi Nakamoto, and they said, well, if you own the wallets, then why don't you transfer any of that uh, Bitcoin to another wallet? And of course, to this date, and it's been quite some time, Craig Wright has not been able to do that. Until he does that, then I will say, yes, he's Satoshi Nakamoto. But I'm gonna ask you the question, does it really matter? I'll get to that in a second. However, the operators of BitcoinCore.org, the website for the crypto's developer team, Bitcoin Core, did take down their copy of the paper, references to it deleted and the changes merged on GitHub, according to Bitcoin.org. By surrendering it in this way, the Bitcoin Core project has lent ammunition to Bitcoin's enemies, engaged in self-censorship and compromised its integrity, said the organization. The organization said the Bitcoin white paper was included in the original Bitcoin project files. The project was published under the permissive and free MIT license by Satoshi Nakamoto. Let me say that again. The organization said the Bitcoin white paper was included in the original Bitcoin project files. And the project was published under the permissive and free MIT license by Satoshi Nakamoto. So Satoshi Nakamoto, whoever he, she, they are, wanted this to be out in the open as much as possible, and it wasn't, didn't belong to any one person, and it was open source. So it's a very odd thing that now all of a sudden that the potential Satoshi Nakamoto is like, nope, it's all mine, give it back and take it all down. It's just amazing how those things uh, change, if that is really the case. As such, Bitcoin.org said, there is no doubt it has the legal right to host the white paper. Furthermore, Satoshi Nakamoto has a known PGP public key, therefore it is cryptographically possible for someone to verify themselves to be Satoshi Nakamoto. Unfortunately, Craig has been able to do this, the post ads. So also remember this before we get uh, going. Satoshi Nakamoto, Satoshi Nakamoto, look, I'm already getting confused. Craig Wright has already gone through court cases uh, to prove this. He's been taken to court uh, by multiple people and really all he had to do to prove it was just to use that public key and to transfer a little bit of Bitcoin around, and he could not do uh, that aspect. Also, uh, when he put in paperwork to the uh, judge to prove that he was Toshi Nakamoto, uh, a couple of those uh, addresses and wallets that he had put into it, they said, yes, this is mine, this is the one that Satoshi uses. Uh, the next day, or it was a week later, uh, someone actually opened that one up and transferred it, and then put a memo and said, Craig Wright is a liar. This is not Satoshi's wallet. This is my wallet and you can verify it right now. So, so then, then of course, some people said, oh, so t Craig Wright just playing 3D chess and he did that himself. I'm like, no. So that is what is going on. But let me just ask you this question, which is this. If Craig Wright, first of all, did come out and said, I am Satoshi Nakamoto, 
I am the person that invented all these things, all, all Bitcoin. Everything that has to do with Bitcoin, it's all me. Me, me, me. So now you have a centralized person that governments can attack. They can look at them and go, you are the cause of all this illicit activity and you need to regulate it and you need to do something about it. It's the same thing that happened with, we'll just say, Silk Road when they uncovered or amassed uh, one of the uh, founders, the Dread Pirate Roberts. Unfortunately, I don't think that was even the, the right guy. I don't want to even get in that debate about who that really is or whatever else, but the whole thing was this, is that they pegged it on a person, one person, and said, you are the one that is responsible for everything, and we're going to peg everything on you. And since you own it, you need to shut it down. So in my personal opinion, I think it's the greatest thing of all time that if Satoshi Nakamoto is still alive, first of all, and he, she, they knows exactly what's going on, it's the best thing that they never show up. And I would think that as smart as Craig Wright is, he would realize that even if he was or was not. I'm not here to debate that. I just don't see the point of someone coming and going, it's me. Well, if it is you, then just move some Bitcoin around. That's all you got to do. It's very simple. And uh, that's what we got. Now, some people will say, but Rob, you don't understand, because if he is Satoshi Nakamoto, then he can move all that Bitcoin around, and there's like a million uh, of, uh, of Bitcoin that, would, that Craig Wright would, uh, would have in his possession, and he could crash the market. First of all, if that really did happen, who cares? Do you think that he'd really want to crash the market if he had that much Bitcoin? Heck, Grayscale and the rest of those, Grayscale itself has like uh, 500,000. Of course, it's the different investors and whatnot. But then people will say, but he's the, he's the one that created it. And if he can create it, he can destroy it and everything else. I'm like, really? Is that the truth? Does it really matter who really created it and where it, got, where it, come, where it goes in the future? You have no farther than, than to look at the, the uh, McDonald's story. There's a great video. Check it out on Netflix. You haven't seen it already. It's called The Founder. McDonald's, I'm sure most of you know what that is. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, McDonald's was started by the McDonald's brothers in San Bernardino, California. And then this guy, Ray Kroc, came along, and he was just a salesman, a shake salesman, I think. And he said, hey, you know what? This looks like a pretty good, can I, you know, branch off? Can I fork the McDonald's <laughs> and set it up where I live? Sure, go ahead and do that. And he did that so well, and he did everything as far as McDonald's, and he grew it so much that he shut down the, the, the McDonald's brothers, and he became McDonald's. So it doesn't matter who starts it. Really, it means who grows it, who brings it to the public, and what does it actually mean for everybody. And uh, I don't care. I don't care who started Bitcoin. It's, it's too big for just any one person anyhow. That is just my theory. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on.